Houston. The School for Good and Evil, based on Soman Chainani's popular book series, recently dropped on Netflix a few years ago, and its cliffhanger ending has fans eagerly wondering if a sequel is in the works. The movie, which sticks closely to the plot of Chainani's novel, centers around two best friends, Sophie played by Sophia Ann Caruso and Agatha played by Sophia Wiley, who find themselves at the titular School for Good and Evil. Despite Sophie's princess-like appearance and Agatha's more witchy persona, the two end up in what they believe are the wrong schools, Sophie in the School for Evil and Agatha in the School for Good. Throughout the movie, Sophie and Agatha try to prove they've been wrongly placed, but their efforts lead them to uncover darker secrets about the school itself, culminating in a series of dramatic battles. By the time the film ends, it's clear that the story isn't over, and there are a lot of questions left unanswered. So will there be a sequel? And what could it look like? Let's dive into the film's ending, what it sets up, and what we can expect moving forward. The ending of The School for Good and Evil left viewers with a lot to think about. Just when it seemed like Sophie and Agatha might get their happy ending, the film throws a curveball. In the final scene, where we see Tedros's, played by Jamie Falter's arrow, pierce the vortex between the two worlds, with Tedros calling out, I need you, Agatha, this is followed by the schoolmaster's dagger, a significant moment since the schoolmaster was supposedly defeated earlier in the movie. These events raise questions about whether the schoolmaster is truly dead and what Tedros's call for help means for Agatha. Then Kate Blanchett's narrator voice says, this was only the beginning, confirming that the magical journey of Sophie and Agatha is far from over. While Netflix hasn't made any official announcements about a sequel, director Paul Feig has expressed a clear intention to turn the school for good and evil into a franchise. Feig, known for directing movies like the Ghostbusters remake, said in an interview with Entertainment Weekly that he hopes to explore the world further and adapt the events of the second book in the series, A World Without Princes. Given that there are six books in the series, the potential for a multi-film franchise is there, provided the first movie gains enough traction. If a sequel to The School for Good and Evil happens, it would likely follow the events of Chainani's second book, A World Without Princes. In the book, Agatha wishes for a different ending to her story, missing her connection with Tedros. This act opens the gates to the school, which has undergone a transformation. Instead of being divided into a school for good and a school for evil, the institution is now split into a school for girls and a school for boys, leading to new conflicts and characters. The first film already hints at this future storyline. Tedros's call for Agatha through the vortex, as well as the presence of the schoolmaster's dagger, seems to set up the next chapter of their story, especially with Agatha's growing connection to Tedros and the unresolved tension between her and Sophie. Sophie, who struggles with her inner darkness throughout the first film, isn't done grappling with her villainous tendencies which would likely be a central theme in any sequel. At the same time, Sophie and Agatha's friendship will continue to be tested, especially as Tedros becomes a more prominent figure in Agatha's life. There are plenty of unresolved plot lines that could be addressed in a sequel. One of the biggest loose ends is the state of Sophie and Agatha's newfound magical powers. By the end of the first movie, both girls have unlocked new abilities, but we haven't seen the full extent of what they're capable of. Additionally, the movie ends with the idea that good and evil aren't as black and white as they seem. Sophie starts the movie convinced she belongs in the school for good, but by the end she embraces her place in the school for evil, at least for a time. The first movie also teases more about the nature of the school master Rafal, played by Kit Young. It's revealed that Rafal had disguised himself as the headmaster for years, and had been manipulating events behind the scenes. Although Rafal is defeated by Sophie and Agatha at the end of the movie, his return could be hinted at by the flying dagger, suggesting that he may still have unfinished business with the school and its students. Another key storyline that a sequel would likely explore is the relationship between Agatha and Tedros. 
The first movie sets up a potential romance between the two characters, but there's a lot more to be unpacked. In a world without princes, Tedros and Agatha's relationship faces significant challenges as Sophie tries to keep Agatha away from Tedros. Sophie's feelings for Tedros combined with her darker impulses create a tense love triangle that would undoubtedly drive much of the drama in the sequel. Agatha, who spends much of the first film advocating for a more nuanced view of good and evil, will have to reconcile her feelings for Tedros with her loyalty to Sophie. This complex dynamic between the three characters will likely play a central role in any future movie, particularly as Sophie continues to struggle with her inner villain. One of the most interesting aspects of The School for Good and Evil is how it challenges the traditional ideas of good and evil. Sophie's journey in particular highlights that good and evil aren't always what they seem. Sophie starts the movie believing she is destined for greatness, only to realize that her selfish desires lead her down a darker path. Meanwhile, Agatha, who is often seen as an outsider and even called a witch, shows herself to be truly selfless and kind. This theme is reinforced throughout the movie, particularly during the trial by tail, where Sophie and Tedros are supposed to prove Sophie's goodness. Instead, Sophie's failure to act selflessly reveals her true nature. The first film ends with Sophie renouncing evil, but it's clear that her journey of self-discovery is far from over. Agatha's character, on the other hand, serves as a reminder that the world isn't divided into strict categories of good and evil. Her belief that there's more to the world than this dichotomy allows her to make selfless choices, but it also sets her apart from the other students at the School for Good. This theme of moral complexity will likely continue to be a central focus in future films. So when might we see a sequel to The School for Good and Evil? Based on Netflix's usual production schedule, it's reasonable to predict that a sequel, if greenlit, would be released sometime in October 2024. The first movie was filmed from January to July 2021 and was released in October 2022. If a similar timeline is followed for the sequel, production could have started in 2023 with a release the following year. However, it's important to note that there has been no official confirmation from Netflix yet, so these are just predictions at this point. With six books in Chainani series, there's plenty of material for Netflix to adapt into multiple movies. Director Paul Feig's interest in creating a movie franchise combined with the rich world and complex characters of Chainani's books makes The School for Good and Evil a prime candidate for a long-running series of films. The themes of good and evil, the evolving relationships between the characters, and the magical setting offer a lot of potential for exploration in future installments. Moreover, with Netflix investing heavily in building franchises around existing IPs, it wouldn't be surprising if The School for Good and Evil becomes one of the streaming giant's flagship fantasy series. The combination of young adult fantasy, magic, and moral complexity makes it an appealing choice for both teen audiences and older viewers who enjoy stories with a bit more depth. Well, that's it for today. With so many unanswered questions and an exciting world still left to explore, will Agatha and Sophie's friendship survive the looming challenges? and what will become of the mysterious connection between Agatha and Tedros. Would you join them for another adventure, or do you think the story should have ended with the first film? Let us know in the comments.